times. Now. Yeah. So first of all, no panic. I didn't fly from Wuhan or China. I, I, I based in New York, and I just landed from New York. <laughs> okay. So I'm um, very happy to be here. My name is Ciara Sun. I'm the vice president at Hobi Group, and uh, I'm the head of uh, global markets and business. So can we? Can I actually get a clicker on? Uh, it's here. Just some oh, okay. Sure. Thank you. So my topic today is about blockchain and um, how it uh, relates and relaxes to the um, traditional finance market. A little bit about me. Um, after my MBA program, I joined Boston Consulting Group for, um, for traditional um, strategy and management consulting, focusing on the financial services area. Um, just an interesting fact. So it looks quite impossible for a simple photo sharing app to be sold for over a billion dollar, but Instagram did it. And a simple chat app sold for $19 billion, and WhatsApp did it. And look at um, Bitcoin. A decentralized, permissionless system worth $133 billion. Bitcoin made it passable. Why should you be interested in cryptocurrency? As we can see that in the year of 2019, uh, Facebook announced Libra and um, um, Central Bank of China announced DSAP. So a lot of the traditional um, government and business, uh, business leads are coming to the, the play of um, blockchain cryptocurrency. And Bitcoin outperformed traditional assets by 300% on average. And it still outperform all major financial assets in 2019, include um, gold, silver, and S&P 500. And it has very low correlation with gold and S&P 500 and other traditional commodities. And uh, this is something that I want to um, mention. The halving event is happening within um, three months from today. And uh, look at historical data, having events constantly have positive effect on the Bitcoin price. And we see a lot of the interest from uh, traditional institutions coming into play in, the, um, in Bitcoin and um, other cryptocurrency. So what do investors need to access crypto? They need legal fiat on ramps, they need a complete ecosystem of financial products and services, and they definitely need seamless trading experience. So who are we? Uh, we are Hobi, um, and we offer more than 50 different products and services in the blockchain ecosystem. We have our um, Hobi Global Exchange that's uh, one of the top exchanges in the world. Uh, we offer spot trading, OTC brokerage, and uh, futures trading. We also offer staking, wallet, uh, financial services, consulting services, and our Hobi chain, which just went alive um, um, by um, last end of last month. And we also offer lending, business, and um, uh, research and education um, for blockchain in China. And we provide services to more than 10 million users across the globe for over 170 different countries. So why are we doing this for such a big um, appearance around the globe? As we can see that um, current economic and infrastructure development is very uneven across the countries in terms, of, uh, in terms of logistics, information, as well as finance. So blockchain and digital assets can actually help to build a more open, lower cost, and more efficient global financial infrastructure solution. So on the right side, we can see that a traditional cross-border payment infrastructure. On the right side is uh, what blockchain can do. So in the future, blockchain and digital assets are likely to become the foundation of new generations of global global financial infrastructure and will have a profound impact on the global financial landscape. So this is currently where, what we are doing globally. Um, in Argentina, we partner with Ministry of Finance and uh, also Social Security. And in Nigeria, we work with the Central Bank, SEC, and Fidelity Bank. And we are working with um, a lot of uh, different partners around the globe to help with some um, cross-border payment solutions with technology of blockchain. 
So this is something that's definitely important in the, in the whole cryptocurrency industry, security, security, and security. These are just some of the events that happened um, in the past in the history of our industry. A lot of security issues. So that's why with Wobi, we, um, we put in two years of effort and developed this um, Star Atlas system. It's an on-chain monitoring system to be able to identify and block these um, malicious addresses automatically. And with real-time monitoring, we can identify those accounts and take actions immediately. Um, so some of the some of the um, examples happened in the past. We helped them. Uh, we helped uh, some of the um, government entities and as well as banks around the globe to help freeze accounts um, so that we can trace back and uh, and help uh, help with um, uh, with uh, funds that are are stolen and um, tr converted into Bitcoin. So with. Um, with that um, spoken, we've been doing well in the industry. Um, our aggregate funds over the assets um, account to 12.8 uh, billion US dollars, and we made 680 million US dollars in revenue in 2019. And that's all transparent public information because we use 20% of our revenue to do our HT token repurchase and burning. And this is just some um, data showing that. Um, um, trust from our customers because, you know, exchanges are different than wallet or custodian. They put assets on the exchange to trade. So that's a that's actually a fair way to 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 rank exchanges rather than just um, trading volume, I believe. And um, in the six years of history for Hobby Exchange, um, trading volume exceeds 3.8 uh, trillion U.S. dollars by the end of 2019. And we actually broken um, 10 records in global daily tr Bitcoin trading volume. So spot trading is um, where we started, and uh, trading volume daily is uh, over 800 million. And derivatives, um, we actually launched it by the um, end of 2018, so it's very early. But uh, we've made a major uh, achievement on on um, futures trading, and uh, with the zero clawback, we we are still um, currently keeping the world record. By January 20th, 2020, um, our derivative trading volume um, actually surpassed OKEX and BMAX and uh, become number one worldwide. And as of today, we start a system upgrade. Um, so our system responds one times faster and uh, throughout increased by over 50%. And um, by uh, March 26, our perpetual swap will be available to um, our, our customers. Thank you so much. And um, I'm open to questions if uh, you have any of them. Yeah, so uh, I wanted to ask, where does uh, the majority of your trading volume come from? In which uh, part of the world? What, where, where is the data coming from? No, the, um, the trading volume. Like, does it come from China or the US or Russia or? Oh yeah, so um, over 60% of our trading volume comes actually from the Western market and 40 of them comes from Eastern market. And uh, as we launched our institutional business unit in 2019, um, right now on Hobby Exchange, there are over 42% of trading volume actually comes from institutions. Given all the um, problems the world's currently facing um, with COVID-19, are you seeing more or less interest from, from Asia in trading of cryptocurrencies? Um, well, compared to the Western market, I'd say um, right now it's really a tie to tie, but compared to the past, we've seen more interest. 
um, with um, register users number increase, it's about the same. But actively trading numbers of users increased quite a bit compared to two years ago. Yep. Hey, um, could you give a, um, a summary of where the Chinese regulators are and how that's changed you know, in the last year or two in terms of supporting crypto and exchanges like, like yourself, assuming you're still based in China? Uh, okay, so in uh, uh, 2017, September 4th, that's when the Chinese government shut down exchanges in China. And uh, we shut it down, and uh, that's where, you know, some of our competitors took off when they choose to kind of ignore the regulations and compliance. And later on, we decided to um, still operate, but we moved outside of China. We moved to our base to Singapore. And in China, we don't do anything associated with cryptocurrency or exchange business. Um, our Huobi China entity, which is based in uh, Hainan, that's the sandbox for blockchain in China, we do um, blockchain technology solutions, educations, and, uh, and research just only regarding to, to blockchain. And as of, as of last year, October 24th, that's when the president endorsed the industry of blockchain and he encouraged everyone to learn about blockchain. So we made a um, decision um, to put blockchain education and research as top of our strategy. And we've um, used um, over 10 million um, Chinese yuan to help uh, government entities and traditional business and corporates and as well as top universities to learn about blockchain. And we did over, uh, as of now, over 250 different workshops for blockchain education. Hi, thank you for your time. I am curious, so with, with your reach and, and the volume that you have, do you have, and the partnerships that you have with remittance that you mentioned, do you have a plan to do something like a Libra play for a global remittance, one app for them all kind of situation? So as I mentioned, we are actually working on a project. It's called uh, Hobi Cloud 2.0. So it's a cross-border payment that we work with uh, some of the Bells and Roads uh, uh, countries. Last December, we actually hosted the first government-backed blockchain industry in Hainan, and we invited Minister of Finance over from over 18 countries, and we had closed all discussions of uh, how blockchain technology and cryptocurrency can help with cross-border payment. Thank you. Yep. 